Welcome to this new series, The Monthly Sky Guide. In this series, we'll be going through what is in the night sky for the upcoming month so that you can plan your photo shoots to match the current objects. To start off with, let's go over a quick summary of September, then we'll jump into special objects and events, what's happening in the solar system, and then a breakdown of best objects for the Northern Hemisphere and what to do in the Southern Hemisphere this month. So let's get started on lunar dates. September starts off with a full moon early on, on the 2nd of September. So if you're looking to get those lunar shots happening, you want to do that early this month. We then move into the third quarter on the 10th. The new moon happens on the 17th. So if you're wanting to do any deep space or photography that revolves around imaging faint objects, you want to do that around the middle of September. And then we come to the, thir uh, the first quarter in the 24th of September. September 2020 is a good month for planets. There are a lot of planets up at the moment, including Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune, with Mars and Uranus doing okay, but they will become better later, a bit later in the year. Now, the highlight is that Orion is coming back to grace our skies. If you are a early riser, make sure you look to the east in the mornings, and Orion and all of its beautiful nebula nebulosity will be there. Jumping into special objects and events for this month. Unfortunately, September doesn't have too much, but it is the September equinox on the 22nd. This represents the date of equal length of day and night. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then moving into the end of September, your nights will start getting longer than your days. And for those of us in the Southern Hemisphere, the days will start getting longer than the months. As we then jump into looking at the solar system, Neptune is reaching its opposition on the 12th. So if you're looking to photograph this deep planet, you want to photograph it around the 12th. It will still be quite faint at a magnitude 7.8, but that is definitely bright enough to capture in most moderate to high powered telescopes. The moon and Jupiter have a conjunction on the 25th. They will be 1.43 degrees apart from each other, which is reasonably close and definitely visible to the naked eye, as well as in most medium powered telescopes. If you're looking to image this, you will be able to get Jupiter as well as its four Galilean moons and the moon in frame, and it should be quite nice. The moon does reach its first quarter on the 24th, so expect the moon to be about half full when you're doing this conjunction lineup. So if possible, work around that. Mercury is also reaching its highest point of elongation at the end of this month. So if you want to take shots of Mercury, make sure to look in the west just after sunset. It'll be about 20 to 25 degrees above the horizon. Just a quick note as well, if you are looking to photograph anything close to the sun, make sure that you are very careful not to point your telescope at the sun. You can do very bad damage to your eyes and camera equipment if you point your telescope at the sun. So be careful about that one. Let's jump into our hemispheres now, the North and Southern Hemisphere, and go over some of the details of each of those. And onto the Southern Hemisphere in Stellarium. So if we're talking about landscape and wide angle photography for the month, there is a great opportunity for you in the Southern Hemisphere to take a wide angle or panorama shot of the Milky Way with the beautiful arch. So here we can see that look as you take from the south through to the north, a really wide angle panorama, you get this beautiful arch shape. So if you can position this with a nice object in the middle under here, reaching up with a light or a torch or framing um, a structure or a tree, something really nice under there, great opportunity for that. This is around uh, you know nine o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. It'll slowly drift lower. And we can see here as we go through the night, it uh, just sets really nice and flat. So there's good opportunities to be taking that this month, especially around the new moon between that sort of 10th and 20th of the month will be really nice. As we get later in the month though, we can see the Milky Way is starting to fall away. And we then have uh, the new moon coming just at the st end of the month as well again. So make sure that you do get all of your Milky Way shots out this month as you can, as we will be losing the Milky Way shortly after September. For those of you who are in really dark places, we also will have a chance to view the zodiacal light. The zodiacal light is light that is coming from the sun and gets reflected off particles within the planetary plane. 
it is a really beautiful phenomenon, but it is very faint. So you will have to go to an exceptionally dark place. The zodiacal light in the southern hemisphere will be viewable in the west just after dusk. So as soon as it turns astronomical dark, look in the west and take a photo. Make sure there's no cities far in the horizon as that will block out that light source though. Moving on to deep space objects in the southern hemisphere, the Milky Way core is still high overhead earlier in the night in September. So if you're looking to take any photos of objects within the core of the Milky Way, make sure to get that done early this month because it will be setting earlier and earlier every night. There's some great things available for viewing at the moment. We have the Lagoon and Trifid nebulas up really high. We then also have the Swan slash Omega Nebula and the Eagle Nebula, which are up really nice and high. Uh, we also have the Cat's Paw Nebula in here, uh, along with the War and Peace Nebula. All of these th play, uh, nebula are looking really nice at the moment. They're up really nice and high early in the night, so if you want to get a couple of hours on them, make sure you do so from about sundown until just before midnight. As we move into the early morning of later in September, we have the Orion Nebula, as well as all of the associated Horsehead, Flame, Running Man Nebulas coming through. So our summer targets are starting to come back up again, which is really nice. You then have the Rosetta Nebula, which is starting to rise, as well as the small and large Magellanic Clouds will be up quite high earlier in the mornings, if you're an early riser. Moving on to the Northern Hemisphere, from a wide angle point of view, the Milky Way core season is coming to its end and is setting below the horizon more and more. So make sure if you can, you get the last shots that you can of the Milky Way core before it dips down. Although you do have an opportunity here to have some really beautiful shots of a vertical Milky Way. So if you're looking to the south uh, and the west early in the night, you can see here, the Milky Way sits up really nice and high here. So make sure you're planning your shoots around objects in that area and that you're prepped for the Milky Way to drift across that section. As the month goes on and darkness extends its hours after we reach the equinox, the Northern Lights will start to become easier to capture as those darkness hours extend and come further south from the Arctic. Again, the zodiacal light will start becoming visible again for the Northern Hemisphere. It will be in the east just before dawn. So do make sure if you want to capture that, you go out to a very dark place where there is nothing bright to the east and uh, take some photos. You can use the same settings as this as you would for a regular Milky Way shot. Looking at the deep space side of things... The Northern Hemisphere has the lovely Cygnus region with the North American Nebula uh, up nice and high at the moment. You also have the Swan and Eagle Nebula, which are visible a bit a little lower down in here. And if you really want to, you can still image the Lagoon and Triffid Nebula, but they are definitely on their way out and you will start getting a lot of interference from the air mass. As we move into the early mornings, again, we are seeing the Orion Nebula in here with all of its accessories and the Rosetta Nebula. We have the Pleiades, which are up and visible. As well as the California Nebula and the Flaming Star Nebula. If you like what you've seen and you'd like to know more about what's happening in the night sky, make sure you hit subscribe as this will become a full-time monthly upload. So all the best for September shooting and clear skies.